In the previous videos and topics, we looked at how these two processes, IPP and DMPP, are synthesized in plant through the mevalonic acid pathway and metal l phosphate pathway. In today's video, we are going to look at how these two processes, DMPP and IPP, are condensed in a reaction to produce linear terpenes in plant. Don't forget we established the fact that terpenes are made of monomers which are called isoprenates. And these units are made from the dephosphorylation of DMAPP or IPP. When a terpene is made of just one isoprenic molecule, which is five carbons, it is called a hemiterpene. If it is two, it is called a monoterpene. If it is three, it is called a sesquiterpene. If it is four, it is called diterpene. If it is five, it is called sesterpene. If it is six, then we have cis um, triterpene. In this reaction, in this video, we're going to look at how these two reactants, DMAPP and IPP, are condensed in a mechanism to form linear terpenes, which are made of isoprenic molecules in plant. In the two reactions, the IPP and DMAPP undergo what we call a nucleophilic electrophilic reaction to produce linear terpenes. In the two reactions, one acts as a nucleophile and the other acts as the electrophile. The IP, which is the isopentanal part of phosphate, in most cases acts as the nucleophile in the reaction and also the extending unit in the reaction, whereas the DMAPP acts as the electrophile or the starting unit. The first reaction is what is called the ionization of the DMAPP molecule. The phosphate group attacks the terminal carbon of the DMAP and the good phosphorylation, which creates a positive charge on that carbon. So here, if there's a terpen, this will have been carbon 1, this is carbon 2, carbon 3, 4, and 5 of the isoprenate monomer. Here, the phosphate attached to carbon 5 of the DMAP and the good ionization to create a positive charge, which is a carbon ion, um, the carbocation or carbocation on the carbon 5 which gives it a net positive charge. Then it undergoes what we call resonance between this carbon, this carbon, and these three carbons, these three carbons to form a more stable structure. Now the carbocated DAP is ionized and being attacked by the nucleophile, which is the IPP. So the carbon one of the IPP attacks the nucleophile or the electrophile, which is the DAP at the terminal carbon. So this carbon here, attacks this carbon as shown in the arrow here so we create a net extending unit so if this carbon bonds to this carbon we will have this phosphate as this you have this carbon as this you have this carbon too as that now if this carbon bonds to this carbon the bond in here breaks and the electrons in this bond is used to create a new bond between the terminal carbon, which is the one with the blue color, this one, to the one with the red color, this one. Then it leaves a net positive charge on this carbon, which is shown here. So in this extended unit, this carbon, which is the four here, is the one which is the red here. Then the blue one is this. Now, because the pi electrons in this bond is being used to form a new bond between this carbon and this carbon, there is a net positive charge created on this carbon, which is carbon 3 in this case. So, a new charge or positive charge is created on this carbon, as shown here. So, you have an extending unit. So, we have this carbon as this, this carbon as that, this carbon as this then this carbon as this now for us to ensure stability we have a plus charge here and a base must abstract an adjacent proton so that we can form a double bond so a base takes a hydrogen from this carbon which is most this carbon so we can form a double bond between this carbon the one with the plus charge and the one we take the proton from so this is the final product now when two or your one IPP and DMAPP undergoes a reaction, the first terpen linear terpen produces called what for a geronal pyrophosphate, which is GPP. So GPP is produced when DMAPP and IPP undergoes the first condensation reaction. 
0,5-phosphate. So that's a simple mechanism. The first one is the ionization of the DNA to create a positive charge. Then an attack on the plus charge by the IPP. Then the linear molecule which is being formed has a plus charge on this carbon. Then the base takes a proton from this carbon so we can create a double bond between the terminal carbon or this carbon and the one with the plus charge. So this is the resulting linear or first linear type of molecule which is produced after the condensation reaction between DMAPP and IPP. So this is how the mechanism goes. The IPP acts as the nucleophile and attacks the carbon 5 or DMAPP where this one goes. Then we have a journal part of phosphate. Now when next, when one another IPP comes and bonds to this one, there is a leaf of the pyrophosphate group so that we can have an extended list. So the IPP molecule we have here, we have two IP molecules here and one DMAPP. This molecule is made of three isoprenate. Unlike the GPP we produce earlier, this one is called Farnesyl pyrophosphate. Farnesyl pyrophosphate is made of three isoprenate or one DMAPP and to IPP molecule. So in general sense, if you have a DMAPP plus IPP, we produce a geronal pyrophosphate. If the GPP condenses with one other molecule of IPP, we produce Farnesyl pyrophosphate. And stepwise condensation produces linear terpenes, which is made of several monomers of isoprenate. For example, if we have several of these condensed, we are going to produce a squalene, which is made of about five or six isoprene molecule. So this is a very short tutorial on how to synthesize linear terpenes in plant. Another mechanism of how it goes. So the first one is ionization, then the reaction between the ionized product and IPP, produce DPP, FPP, and the rest. So this one is a sesquit terpene because it's made of three isoprene in this molecule and also a diet in here because it's made of four isoprene money thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe after watching so you can receive every update from this channel